You know, and I was I was thinking about two people last night. I was thinking about the soundbite that we played from Gino Oriema, um, which we played on the show yesterday from April of 2010, when he came on Mike and Mike at a time when his team was just dominating women's college basketball in a way that some people felt was bad for the sport because it had taken all of the mystery and the fun out of all the competition out of what's supposed to be a competition. And I asked him about it, and he said the answer is for everyone else to get better, not for us to get worse. We played that soundbite for you yesterday, and certainly we saw that. I mean, the the level of basketball that was on display last night, that first half was breathtaking. The first quarter, the pace in the first quarter was incredible. Stace was in the other room doing something. She wanted to watch the game. She was finishing something up, and I was just yelling to her, you got to get in here and see this. Like, I, I, the, the, the pace was spectacular. It was, it was absolutely wonderful to watch in every way, regardless of who you were rooting for. The other person I was thinking of to be honest with you, was Pat Summit. Hembo and I wrote a book called Got Your Number, and we gave one of the numbers, I don't recall which one it was now, to Pat Summit. And she was the legendary women's coach at Tennessee who really built women's college basketball in so many ways. Before there was Gina Wariema, before there was Rebecca Lobo, long before anyone had ever considered there being a Caitlin Clark or an Angel Reese, there was Pat Summit coaching her basketball team by day and washing their uniforms by night. Literally, if you read the chapter on her in our book, they didn't have anyone to do that. So they would practice during the day and they would leave their locker, their, their uniforms in the locker room and Pat Summit would wash the uniforms so they could practice the next day and play the next day. And when they would travel to away games, they usually didn't have enough money to stay in hotels. Literally, there wasn't a budget to stay in hotels for her teams when they would travel. So they would sleep in sleeping bags on the floors of gyms. Not making this up, this happened. And so I just, wherever Pat Summit was watching this thing from last night, I can't even fathom the pride she must have felt. Because last night felt like something different. Last night felt... I don't know what the audience is going to be. I don't know if it'll wind up having more viewers than last year's championship game or anything like that. But last night felt like the biggest event that was going on in the world. It was one of those nights where you're watching a sporting event and you feel like the entire world is watching at the same time. And that is something that in the history of women's sports has happened very few times. It doesn't never happen. It usually happens in international competitions. It'll happen when the Women's World Cup is going on and the soccer team is playing and things like that. It does not happen often for women's sports. And it, so in that regard, it felt like such a victory in so many ways, and there were so many people who deserve so much credit for that. First and foremost, the women who were out there on the floor because they had to put on the show and they put on an extraordinary show. But there were so many other people who I think can rightly take a lot of pride for us being in a place where a night like last night was possible. And Pat Summit, probably as much as absolutely anyone, I really wish she had lived to see that night. There was a uh, sports sociologist that once said, in modern history, there are two figures that belong on the Mount Rushmore of women's sports. Billie Jean King and Pat Summit. Mm -hmm. No one else is close to third. Pat Summit was once approached by Tennessee officials, as you might recall, about coaching the men's team at the university. She said, well, why is that considered a step up? You know, Pat Summit was years, if not decades, ahead of her time. And the legacy that she left and the legacy that so many of her players and other players left kind of culminated in the, in the event that we saw last night. Last night was an event. It was a cultural touchstone. It, is, it was a basketball game that someday we might look back on and say to ourselves, that was the beginning of this sport becoming so popularized and so mainstreamed that it, if not surpassed the men, certainly met the men. And the point here is not to diminish what the men's game has become. The point here is to amplify that the women's game has gone from being not that long ago an afterthought to at the forefront of everyone's mind. And this is not me just saying this as an ESPN employee because we have had these games, because I have no interest in doing that. It's because I care so much, and people in my life all of a sudden care so much. It was a breathtaking basketball game. The pace was frenetic. The quality of play was extraordinary. No basketball fan could have watched that game and not sincerely enjoyed it. 